The question of generators comes up a lot with us because of our electric motor. And the question is, diesel or gasoline, which one is better? It's a loaded question. The diesel ones can crank up more power, they're more efficient, all these wonderful things. They're also a lot heavier and a lot more expensive. The gas ones, they don't crank out as much power, but they're lighter and they're easier to come by and easier to replace. So we started out with a gasoline generator and that's well, what actually... We started out without a generator. Right. And we just solar panels, and that wasn't really enough. It wasn't like it, enough. it doesn't charge the batteries fast enough to actually be motoring places. So then we got the gas generator, and it did really well. So what we got was a Honda 2000. Yeah, so it puts out 2,000 watts with a 2 kilowatt generator. It it's, weighs very little. Yeah, it's like 60-some pounds or something. It's easy to pick up. We just keep it on our stern and uh, keep it covered to help protect it from the elements. And it's really fuel efficient. I mean, it, its tank is about a gallon, and it takes between 8 to 12 hours to burn that tank. That's pretty good. So that generator has done us a lot of good. However, you know, we don't use it very often because yeah. we use our sails. Yep. <laughs> uh, so we, it's kind of an emergency backup for us. Uh, if, if we are indeed in no wind or uh, doldrums or anything like that, we actually just prefer to sit in silence rather than hear that generator in yeah. the background. Now, I personally like to crank the generator on a couple hours before we come into a port just to top, top off, off the batteries. I like to have full batteries when we're approaching. So... We'd usually crank the generator on, have it run for a while, charge up, and then when we came in, we didn't need the generator on. That was for coastal cruising. So in our opinion, uh, for our situation, which is very specific, <laughs> um, we prefer the gas generator, and when we arrived in the Azores and were given that diesel generator, we immediately had regrets. <laughs> yeah, so it was, it was such a good price that we couldn't say no. The guy started off asking just what he'd been putting into it, which was a huge red flag that we didn't pick up on. Uh, so he wanted 700 euros for it because he spent that in parts. And we were like, nah, and he's like, I'll give it to you. And then we felt bad about taking a generator that's worth over $10,000 for free. So we gave him 100 bucks. So we had this generator, and then the regrets just started piling in. I killed everyone. <sighs> things to be proud of. This is the diesel generator uh, that we are getting rid of. <laughs> yeah, we were going to install it. So a lot of people always say with the electric system, oh, you need a diesel generator, otherwise it doesn't work. Here's nah. the thing. We've gotten this far without it, uh, with not any significant problems. And this guy weighs so much and takes up so much space and the last thing we need in our boat is more weight <laughs> yeah so this guy is 96 or 97 kilos it's a fisher panda diesel generator one cylinder i think it's either three or four kilowatts like it's it's a good generator but it's so heavy and big and then the parts are expensive and we just and you also have to take this. into account the fact that we're an electric Boat, and we did that to be green and environmentally friendly and to use less diesel fuel. Um, this kind of defeats that whole purpose. <laughs> yeah, so, so some, some pluses to a diesel generator. One, uh, diesel mechanics are everywhere so you can get service done on them because they will break and then you need to get service done on them. Diesel fuel is available pretty much everywhere, and they provide a lot of power in there. Just the it basically it acts like a motor. Yeah, it's a motor that's just instead of turning the propeller directly, is turning an electrical winding to charge the batteries to turn the motor. It's good in that sense, in that you then have as much range as your diesel tanks allow. But yeah, it. Then you have another motor to maintain. You have fuel you need to worry about, the quality of the fuel, oil changes, parts breaking. And while this diesel generator was free to us... No, it wasn't. Well, yeah, it was practically free. And we got it for 100 from a guy who's had it for seven years and never installed it. <laughs> and got tired of it sitting around his boat. We should have taken that as a sign. <laughs> yeah, huge sign. So this sucker sat in our cockpit for a couple months. And now we're painting the deck. It's got to go. So a friend is coming to pick it up. That way it doesn't go to waste. It's not going to be in our boat anymore. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Our big issue with the switching over to a diesel generator, even though we were given the generator, is the cost of maintaining it. So the parts are more expensive. Everything's just more expensive with the sucker. Where with the Honda, if it dies, we could actually buy a new Honda for less than what the fuel pump on the diesel generator cost. So... <laughs> so that was a big one for us. Yeah, when we realized that, it was... The diesel generator pretty much died in our minds. At that it was point. a no-brainer. So in conclusion, generators are, I think, pretty necessary if you have an electric motor, but... They're not mandatory. They're not mandatory. Yeah, just like lithium batteries aren't mandatory for electric drives. Like, if you're going to be sailing, you don't need a motor at all. Yeah. So just having something to get in and out of marinas, it just enough to make you run. Totally depends on your style um, yeah. of sailing, and so... That's why this topic is pretty difficult for us to cover unbiasedly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because what's good for us is not going to be good for the majority of people. <laughs> We're special. <laughs> We're happy with our little Honda 2000, and if and when it breaks down, we'll happily get another one, and that'll be our power source. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to follow our journey in real time on a map, receive postcards from our ports of call, and message us directly to the boat, you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below.